All right, so welcome back to Atlantic Fleet. Now, I was going to carry my Royal Navy Battle of the Atlantic campaign. Unfortunately, I've lost a save file. I had a slight problem. I've lost quite a number of my uh, series save files. So I've not been able to continue with them for quite a while. So I'm going to swap sides. I'm going to swap sides over to the cruise marine. It's still the Battle of the Atlantic campaign. I'm going to purchase my own sh ships. So I'm going to start a brand new campaign. Alright, so I've got uh, 280,000 renown to spend. We'll see, during World War II, the cruise marine engaged primarily in U-boat warfare against merchant shipping coming across the Atlantic. Not to also mention the, uh, there's a bit of action in the Pacific with U-boats and also in the Mediterranean, but it's primarily the Atlantic with tonnage war. Uh, they didn't actually engage too much on the surface. They had a number of surface raiders, such as uh, Battle of the River Plate. They had Bismarck, obviously, Shanos, Turpitz. Turpitz never saw any action. Bismarck did. Admiral, she Admiral Graf Spee. Just mentioned the Battle of the River Plate, Graf Spee. So, the one they returned these ships as was uh, pocket battleships. Six 11 inch guns, 12,000 tons, 28 knots, two aircraft which are coming very handy, but very really light deck armour. Obviously, it is really a standard cruiser with a heavy set of guns that you'd normally find on a, a ship of this size and class. So, I think we're going to leave the big stuff. Bismarck, obviously, third, yeah, that's only available the third week, third week of August 1940. Shanhorst. I think we'll leave those alone for now. I'm going to go with two of these the Shea and the Graf Speer. We'll leave Lutzo in harbour for now. This is 224,000. Admiral Hipper. Eight 8 inch guns, slightly less. But 32 knots. And three aircraft. Now, I don't know if these are spotter aircraft or actually ones you can actually use in warfare, seeing drop depth charge, things like that. I've no idea. Or bombs. But I do know if you've got aircraft on body, it expands the, uh, on the, st on the strategy map, it expands your, your likelihood, basically. Increases the likelihood of you, uh, encountering something. So I think we'll get the Hipper. We'll get the Prince, yeah, Prince Eugen. 162,000, we've only got four out of 30. So I don't, I, don't go, I don't want to go too mad with the surface ships because we'll see, we don't want to be doing that. We've got 22 torpedoes on this. Wait a minute, did the other ones have? Ooh, 22 torpedoes on that as well. I should look at the specs, shouldn't I? 16 torpedoes there. They've got 22. Light cruisers. I'd rather have destroyers. No disrespect to light cruisers, but uh, I've got heavy cruisers there. So I think Leipzig class light cruiser. A little bit on the expensive side, 21,500 for a light cruiser. So go with the We'll go with some destroyers. I suppose I should really check how much the U boats actually cost. Okay, U27 Type 7, 14 torpedoes in the store. Type 9s, 22 torpedoes, 2,600 for Type 9. So for an extra 500 renown, you get an extra. 
well, I won't say double, another 50% worth of torpedoes in the, uh, in the stars. So I want some, tor we want some uh, submarines, obviously. I said two, three. Data von Loder. Okay. Six thousand four hundred. A bunch of fifty-five thousand renowned still, so I mean, I'm not exactly short. So I'm going to get all of these. And go back to light cruisers. Leipzig light cruiser. I'll say 21,000. Hipper class heavy cruiser. That's 21,000 and so that's 1,500. What's the difference? Ah. Four inch bell time rather than just two, two inch. Yeah, I think we'll go for these two. So it's like it's fine having heavy cruisers, but we need something to actually kind of cover them. Is all we've got for light cruisers? Conisberg, Karlshuk, and Colm. We'll go for that. Okay. It's a shame I can't actually tell what we've got. To actually leave this uh, shipyard. I see you can come back in, but got Z two three. I think nineteen forty, first of February nineteen forty two or so first week of February. Okay. We'll go for some Type 7s. That's three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And I think I'll get one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, what the heck. We'll get seven. Bit of an odd number, I know. Wow, look how many we've got. Of course, we've got the uh, Type 21. Not available till the third week of September 1943. Now, historically, they did not build this many. Nowhere near. It was extremely difficult to build. So there wasn't that many of them. Okay, so I've deployed the 17 new boats. I'm going to deploy them out into the Atlantic. But they've got to go through here. I could have sent them around this way, but I'm going to try and catch some of the uh, shipping around British coastline as well. The surface ships gone around here. All the cruisers, including the light cruisers and the destroyers. I'm going to try and edge them around here. Then deploy them all south into the Atlantic. There's no point keeping anything around here. Don't think there is anywhere. Okay. So U28 has been well, medium damage, so she's got to go back. Damn it. Okay, of course, there was merchant shipping around here historically, but unfortunately, not around. No. So there's no actual merchant shipping right now. It's a bit strange. But it's quite early, so there's still only 
well, it's first week of September 1939, so it still wasn't just been declared, I suppose. What's the weather like? Poor weather there. Yeah, cloudy there. Nice and sunny there. Okay. So of course we've got our harbours here. So I need to uh, put her into dock. Oh, three turns. That's one and a half weeks. It's very trouble. I mean, oh, you're going to get some nice, hopefully, some nice targets around this side, but you're also going to get a lot of air cover. We move the entire fleet over here, except Gradmull Shear. We'll leave Gradmull Shear around here, around this area. So all but. Now I've never got any of destroyers. I've got a couple of destroyers I can spare. So I think I'll leave a couple of destroyers around here as well. The rest of the fleet. So there, the Norwegian Sea, we have Admiral Shear, Data von Roder, and the Hans Ludman two destroyers. Try and them around here. Okay, let's deploy the U boats out. Going to leave. I see the Type Nines are ocean going. The Type Sevens, technically, were ocean going. That's all that was used, but there wasn't as long range as a Type Nine. But in this particular level of strategy, there is no fuel limits or food supplies. There's no ration limits, so you'd have to keep going back to resupply. Only if you don't have torpedoes. It was actually fuels the deciding factor as to whether you but went back to port or not usually. Only four type sevens. I think the lower numbers are type sevens. Of course I don't have enough U boats to cover every single sector, and even if I do It's not really worthwhile. Because if you encounter something, you haven't got the firepower to be able to uh, deal with it. Okay, let's turn. Okay, one and a half weeks into September. Okay. United Kingdom, British Water, second week of September 1939. We've got four U-boats, they're all Type 7s. We've got a single destroyer, the Van Ock, and uh, protecting one, two, three, four, five large freighters and two C2 freighters. We've got the initiative, and it's the afternoon, which means they could spot us on the surface if our periscope is popping up a little bit too often. Okay, let's head in. Okay, look at the map view. We've got U27, U29 ahead of the convoy. We've got the Vanok, which is the destroyer. Close to U27, U29. We've got U30, U31 in the rear of the convoy. Which isn't a fantastic place because I can't get them to serve. I can't service them during daylight because they'll be spotted straight by the destroyer and it could call in air support. In fact, it probably will call in air support regardless. So, going to have to try and use U27. U1331 will just be the backups for these two. What I'm going to do, I'm going to try and use U1331 to try and lure the Vanok away from U27 and U29. I think that's the best thing to do. I can't risk surfacing and getting U30 and U31 ahead. That's the only way they'll get ahead of the convoy. 
Those ships, and especially this dragon, aren't running a submarine on the surface. But they also definitely aren't runners on under underwater. So I'm going to use 31 and 31 as decoys. Try and draw the Vanox attention away from 27 and 2 now while there's two move in. So you want to take the uh, destroyer out first. Okay, so with 2 7. 14 torpedoes. Okay. Vanok is making nine knots. She's very close. We've got uh, somewhere over there. We've got the other U-boat. And of course, the Rhea, as I said, we've got the other two. They're not going to be able to do any good until they get onto the surface, because these ships will outrun them. Yeah, nine knots is more than we can make underwater. Okay. Go down to one third. Make a hard turn to port. Okay, so the angle on the bow isn't as obtuse as it would be. Yeah, just as I thought, no air support, which is pretty obvious. So we've got four tubes at the front. I believe we've got one tube to the rear. Now the Type 9s have got two tubes to the rear. It doesn't actually tell you that on the specs, though. It doesn't tell you where the actual tubes are. You say top here tubes, storage 14. Let's see how many tubes they've actually got, though, which is... I suppose you've got to look at the model. Okay, never mind. If we can take the destroyer out, we can uh, take our time to get the rest of the ships out. But of course, air support can be called in by the merchants if you're on the surface. So you've got to be very, very, very careful. Okay, so we've got 353.6 three degrees angle on the bow. She's only making 9 knots. Now, the top ears won't hit in a single turn. It'll be the next turn. Okay, three five three, really? It doesn't seem to be compensating for sp for the speed of the ship. I'm gonna fire a spread of two torpedoes. One at three five zero. Of course she could turn. She spots our torpedoes on the surface to which she'll definitely turn. So three five zero. It says three five three point six on our but I don't believe a word it's saying. But they are crossing us slightly, I suppose. Yeah, of course, I'm not exactly going across our about ninety degrees. I'll do three five two point five. Fire. Highly likely she's going to end up hitting. I mean, she's highly likely, highly likely to get hit by somebody if she stays on the straight course, but it's not likely that she uh, will stay on a straight course. As soon as she spots those torpedoes, she'll start turning. They can turn almost on the run. On the run length. I think maybe I should have waited. Damn it. 
then again, they can move that fast. You've got no chance. We've got no chance of keeping up with them, this. So I'm just going to try and follow them as best we can at flank speed. Which is something else that's not simulated is the fact that we've got limited battery power in real life. And that's not simulated. Now if these periscopes get spotted on the surface... We could be depth charged from the air. So I think I'm, next turn I'm going to uh, dive those two subs. Whoa! That's the not gone. Okay, let's go to flank speed. I want to dive. For some reason, I've noticed that uh, during some of the training battles, your submarine seems to uh, reload torpedoes faster when they're actually below periscope depth. thing as well, we, you can't launch torpedoes on a U-boat unless you're at periscope depth, which they could actually launch torpedoes at, a, at fairly, well, below a periscope depth at least. So that's something else that's pretty incorrect. So we get so much renown for that destroyer. Probably not a huge amount, about 1300 maybe. Okay, let's surface. No, I doubt these machines will be accelerating to full speed. I well, know I would. Is it itchy? It's making 12 knots. Elevation is 12.6. So I'll put the splash record here. We'll go to 12.6 first. We'll see, what the, we'll see where the shells land. It's quite windy though, so it, yeah, it's behind us as well, so it'll take the shells. And then carry this. So I'll extend the range slightly. No point in doing that. As in wide shot, scatter your shots or concentrate them because we've only got one deck gun. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe. Little bit down on elevation. Yeah, 
We're making 16.4 knots. Okay, six, 8 degrees. I'll go slightly underneath that because I want to try and hit it beneath the water line. Okay. So that one's the one we was hitting. Yeah. Go to surface. Uh, sorry, periscope depth of shutter. Torpedo deflection is three five six point two. Making forty. She will be accelerating. I'll go with what the spotters are telling me, what my weapons band is telling me. For now. 356.2. As again experienced, this should actually be increasing their accuracy. They should do. So she could be accelerating. No, what am I doing? So just in case she missed it, we missed the first one. It could hit the second one behind it if I give a little bit of an ele slight ele more of a lead. Uh, no. Why is that not coming up? Oh, never mind. Fourteen knots, three five nine point eight. Again, they could turn or accelerate. So I'm going to bring it in by ten, about ten degrees. So it'd be three. No, zero nine point eight. I've got a point nine. Okay, slightly down we are gaining on them. Twelve point six was a hit. That was before we actually closed in on them. So I'm going to bring it down. It was also a little bit too high anyway. So I'm going to go to about 12. I'm surprised I've got no aircraft yet. I'm not wishing for them, obviously. 7.6 was a hit. Go to seven. We are gaining quite rapidly. Oh. Yeah, of course. It's already quite uh, quite low at the waterline when they hit it the first time. 
making 15.3 knots. I knew that's what would happen. So I gave the second torpedo a bit of an extra lead. Three, four, nine. That looks like we're going to, yeah, I'm going to save those. One of those is going to hit down the bow. And if it doesn't, it could hit the one behind it. We've got two more torpedoes heading towards the one behind this. So I think we'll leave it. Those two torpedoes, they look quite promising as well. So I want to save them. So I don't want to keep taking them out after one one single engagement and taking them all the way back to port. Quite a waste. Okay, so 12 was a hit. We're gaining, oh, let's say, two knots or so. We'll make it down to 12, 11.6. No need to adjust for deflection. I mean, I need to slow down. So I think what's happening is that because we're behind the convoy, we're harassing them on the surface of these two U-boats to the rear. They don't know which way to turn. So I've got seven there. Uh, it's saying seven points. The spotters are saying seven point seven, but obviously seven was wasn't even a hit. Leave it at seven. So it just barely missed. Two torpedoes hit it. Whoa. Well, that's one down. And she's well on fire. Now those two top, oh yeah, look at those. If they're the two tracks of the torpedoes, that is going to get it somewhere about midship. She's well on fire. Okay, down to 11.3. Making 15 knots though. Okay, need to do anything this time. Whoa, that's two for it has gone. Two freighters and a destroyer. Okay. Go to all stop, U two seven all stop. Hmm. That's a what's a tonnage on those anyway? Yeah, not as Okay. She's making 4.5 knots. No, we are. Have a look. 17.7 knots. 2,000. Just under 3,000 yards. It's quite an obtuse angle. Obviously, if you launch top ears too closely, the what arm. 336.1 degrees. It might hit it. No, it won't quite get down a single turn. 36.1. Oh, 
don't think she can accelerate any faster, but she could slow down or turn. So we'll come down 37.1. It's all about torpedoes empty now. Oh my word. I hope they haven't missed. Okay, we'll keep on flank speed. I'm going to dive down. Yeah, there we go. See, as soon as you... A lot of times what will happen is if you dive down because you want to try and reload your torpedoes, you get a torpedo reload and you'll be able to fire, at which point you can't really fire because you're not a periscope depth because you dive down. I found that. It's a bit strange. Might be coincidence. I don't know. So I've got three torpedo tubes on the bow. But we can't launch them. Not that well anywhere. Get to a fable position. <laughs> Might be an idea to slow these two down because I don't want to get mixed up with our torpedoes from the other two U boats. I don't want to go sinking a U boat with our own torpedoes, that would be a bit stupid. Two torpedoes. Whoa, oh, whoa, my god. Well, two torpedoes hit something. And that's gone and explode. Oh, right, there we go. Well, that freighter's gone. The other one's exploded. This one up here. Being attacked by the deck guns. Any more? No. I'm going to dive down. Like I said, they seem to load torpedoes faster if you if you dive your boats. Okay, I think we'll stay at this depth. Change angle slightly, just so we don't go fan each other. Got three torpedoes in the bow tubes. The door seems to be taking cover. Okay, that's one sunk then. Okay, right. Sometimes it flashes on the screen down here so quickly you don't actually have time to read it. Hmm, does to actually pass by the other Yui boats quite close. This one, not so much. So we're going to concentrate these two. We're going to concentrate on this one. At least for now. 17.2, not 10,243 yards. Elevation is 21.3. I'll go with what they said. For now, for now, we'll, keep, we'll leave the splash record up here. 21.3. Quite a successful uh, first engagement, though. And it just fell at deflection just a little bit. So it's blowing quite hard from behind us. And he's going across that way. Oh, yeah. Way over. Gonna slow down to full. 
Because if I use the other two U-Bots found these two emergent, I don't want her getting hit by the torps. Which I've already said. Going on to 16 points, so she's going away from us slightly. The flesh was okay though. Just the range was a bit... Slightly over too much. Over enthusiastic, I believe the term is. 12. It says 12 point four. I'm going to go down to 12.1. It'll be shot. Ooh. Okay. No torpedoes yet? No. Oh well. She's a bit closer than U-29 though. U-270 is close than U-29, which we saw anywhere. I'll leave 29 at flank speed. She should have... No, not quite... Not quite reloaded. Because that was down, so he'd be two degrees down or so. We're just about keeping place, pace with her. So I'll come down two degrees to uh, 19.3. We'll try 19.6. Deflections off. No, that's well done. Go up to scope depth. That's two torpedoes, if I remember rightly. U27 has. No, it's only one. Oh, cost it was U30. U29, sorry. Deflection is 9 degrees. Making 17.6 knots. So I'm not surprised. I am surprised I'm not taking evasive action now, but then again, they maybe not know, like I said before. They might not know which way to turn. Ooh, 17 knots might carry it just slightly beyond that angle. There we go. So U-29's got a full so torpedo salvo ready. Yeah. Okay, so I'll bring her to periscope depth next turn. So that's one degree down, 18.5. It says 19.4 there, yet 19.6 was over. And we are gaining on her. Should hit. Nope. Still a miss. Seventeen point four. Twelve point one was a hit. She's pulling away from us slightly, so I'll leave the deflect the or move the deflection over a little bit further. But the elevation will stay the same. Oh 
Well, I think that's gone. Yeah. Okay, so my other two U-bots are over here. If I had torpedoes in U27, I don't think I'm going to use them because they'll hit this wreck. That slow down's about one third. However, U29 is a different story. She's in the clear. Go down to full. Come to scope depth. Point eight seventeen point two knots. Try a spit of two torpedoes. She's not going to accelerate, but she could decelerate. Go to point one four. Take at least two turns to get there. Okay, so if engaging this one, I believe. This one is the one closest to U two seven. So pop a look. U30, U31, yeah. Large freighter there is one we're actually looking at. And that's the one that she just fired on. This is the one that... Uh, okay, so I'm going to switch U30 on U30 to attack this one. With their deck guns. Yeah, I think might be a good idea. I'm going to try and share the, uh, the experience out. These two are taken out at least one apiece. Actually, two apiece, haven't they? These two are taken out one between them. So I'm going to leave U27 out of it. So she's going to stay where she is for now. U29 will say torpedoes have hit this target. If they do, if they miss, it doesn't matter. I'll let U30 and U30 take the experience for these two. That's fair. I think that's fair. I want them all to gain experience for later on in the campaign. I don't want to be green. Because right now the gunnery is um, quite a lot to be desired. In fact, there's a lot to be desired, actually. Keep missing. Well, it's not my fault. The spotters keep telling me, and they're giving me the wrong information. 18.5 degrees. Now, 18.5 degrees, the splash is flawed. That should be 1 degree. 150, depending on the calibre of the weapon, I think, to be perfectly honest, it doesn't mean one degree, like it says in the manual, for all the calibres. Right there, it's 18.5. She's not pulling her efforts, we're actually closing on her. But if anything, it should be lower. So I'm going to go to 17. Aim for the bow. Yeah, not quite enough deflection to the left there. It's not far off. So you two seven will look, well, well, we'll sit the rest of this engagement out. Yeah, 
you 80 shell in the water and if they don't hit yeah I think that top is going to hit the target okay I'm going to get her to dive U27 going to sit this out Share the experience out a little bit. Gonna keep two nine though. Not actively engaged in tag, but as a backup. Just in case I needed. Okay, 16.5 Slightly more on the deflection So you just hit on the uh, starboard side of the ship Good hit Okay, so it tells me those top is going to hit it anyway So I'm going to concentrate on this ship Make an eighteen point eight knots. Slight correction for the wind. We're quite close, I don't want to take too too high an angle. Nine point eight degrees. Let's see when it splashes down where the tunneling is nine point eight. Yeah, a little bit too over. That could have just quite easily just gone over the funnel there. That's done. Fuck, don't have to go up, don't they? I suppose if they're carrying ammunition and fuel and things like that, they would go up. Okay, it says 14.1 degrees. Quite a longer shot, so deflect for the uh, wind a little bit extra. Not a great deal though. Not much, much further away than the other U boat, so 14.1. I'm going to go down to foot 13.9. Whoa. Damn. Closing a little bit. So now I'm to nine. I'm going to nine point five. I'll stop. I'll have to check the stores of torpedoes. No, these two haven't used any torpedoes at all. See, it's going to stay on station. The other two maybe need to go back. Let's start with 14, so. Okay, about there again. So 13.9 was a hit. We are slightly closer. Gonna go down 13.7. Whoa. Let's 
slightly down again, 9.5 degrees, go down 0.2, down to 9.3, compensate slightly. Yeah, she's well on fire now. Two pretty big explosions there on the deck. But it could just be things stored on the deck itself. Not necessarily the ship. What damage did she take anyway? So AAA, propulsion's fine, steam is fine and pump's fine. So she can still stay afloat. Yep, they're not going. Okay, down another point two. Thirteen point six. So thirteen point seven there. That's a splash record. But we fight at thirteen point six, not point seven. It's weird. She's still going at full speed because the engines are fine. But she should be low in the water though. The pumps are fine now as well. Compensate. 13.4 Oh yeah Okay Not as much deflection Come down point 0.2 Actually, we probably won't need to because we're not gaining on. Actually, oh, wait a minute, how are we gaining on her? We're making 17.2 knots. She, she's making 18. I don't think they know what they're talking about. No, I don't actually know what they are, do I? No. I don't know what the ship's making for, it's a sonar contact. Other thing as well, sonar contact. Sonar operators could actually tell how fast the ship was moving. Estimated. Not just range. Leave the range the same as before. Deflect about the same. And fire. So she's pulling away from us. Range the same. 9.3 did miss. Actually, no, I think we'll go up a little bit. 0 0.1 to 9.4. So we're roughly about keeping pace with her now, but she has slowed down a little bit. Yeah, she's making 16.8 knots now. But she's moving slightly over in that direction. Slightly off our own direction. So I think she is. No, she's coming across. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, I see. Yeah, she's slightly moving away like that an angle. Thirteen point three was a hit. Deflect a little bit more because it was only just on the hull. No contact was a miss. 16.8 versus 17.4. Give it 
go up to around 13 point four. No, we'll go to 13.5. Okay. I think she's done. But then again, sometimes you can see that they sort of look like they're sinking all of a sudden, they'll sort of shoot off at high speed again. Whoa, not that one. It's the entire convoy destroyed between four U-boats. Okay, so after action report, first engagement highly successful. U two seven two nine three 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 zero and three one sank one two three four five large freighters and two C two freighters. Oh, the destroyer of a knock. So we've got uh, 54,500 tonnage for now. In the first engagement. And 1,300 tonnes on warships, which we earned renown for. We don't earn renown for merchant tonnage. Okay, so head back to the strategy map. We might need to send 2729 back. I know 3731 should be fine to stay on station now. 